This video is a request for an explanation as to what are ratio spreads and how to play ratio spreads. Now, first, a little bit of clarification. There are different traders in the option world that uh, tends to, well, because being different and not having a consolidated set of vocabulary, use different terms for different types of option strategies. So what I'm about to show you I call a ratio spread. Some option traders call it a ratio back spread. I reserve the word ratio back spread for a different type of trade. So everything I say now um, is in my own vocabulary shared by other traders like me but not all traders like me. So I'm going to show you what's called a ratio spread. Now if you know what a spread is, it's generally selling and buying a call or put at the same time at different strike prices or at the same strike prices but at different expiration dates. Now a ratio spread is doing the same thing but buying different numbers of contracts. And in my definition, the ratio spread is usually is going to be opened um, to where you're buying more out of the money than in the money options. And if that doesn't make sense, no worries. I'm going to show you an example which should explain it pretty well. So here we're looking at Apple, which uh, has not done so well recently. Uh, we had a big earnings gap. Apple climbed back up and now it's heading back down. It doesn't matter which direction uh, you want to trade Apple in. I'm just going to give you an example on the long side and you can reverse it by using puts instead of calls. All right. So the idea here is that you have a bullish thesis. All right. Before you run a ratio spread, why are you going to run a ratio spread? You run it for usually two main reasons. One is you're bullish on the stock. So we're talking about a call ratio spread here. One is you're bullish on the stock. You think there's going to be a strong movement upward somehow. Could be that Apple's got some new product out or there's news that's coming out about it or an earnings report that's going to be bullish. Any bullish thesis works. But the second criteria here, and I may as well just write this down. So when do you want to do a ratio spread? I'm going to call this a call ratio spread. Here's your criteria. One is bullish on the stock. And two is bullish on volatility for the stock. Now how do you check that? Well simply check the volatility in whatever charting program you're using. Now we want to look at implied volatility. We don't care about statistical volatility for the moment so we're looking at the green line. Now if volatility is declining and you believe it's going to continue declining the ratio spread is not always the best strategy. Um, but in the case of being bullish on volatility, in other words, volatility is going to spike, it's going to start moving upward from here, the ratio spread is a good strategy. Now, when will volatility spike? Well, usually it, volatility spikes when there's a news event, which is why I mentioned news events for being a uh, good environment for opening a ratio spread. But it could be a news event, but also simple um, fluctuations in the stock can cause volatility spikes and there's also um, downward movements. Generally when a stock is falling volatility spikes. That's not a one-to-one -one correlation but that is a tendency. So as you'll see here when there's that large area gap, or maybe it's not an area gap, that earnings gap, we had volatility at a peak but then after earnings, volatility tends to decrease. Now, as uh, Apple fell the next three days, volatility increased. So, um, usually, the better strategy is to take a, a bearish position, assuming you have a bearish thesis, to take a bearish position on the stock and then open a ratio spread using puts. Because the bearish, remember, our criteria are twofold. I cannot close this program. Our criteria are twofold. Now, this is the call ratio spread, right? 
the bull the put ratio spread is going to be the opposite. We are bearish on the stock, but we're still bullish on volatility. Now, being bearish on the stock is often being the same as bullish on volatility. So a uh, put ratio spread is even safer, even better than a call ratio spread. But generally, people are going to be using call ratio spreads because they tend to trade with the market. And right now, we're in a bull market. So you're going to be looking at, for example, um, investors who are speculating that the next earnings report is going to be good. Or if we're talking about a pharmaceutical stock, perhaps they're coming out with the results of a clinical trial. And we believe that the results will be good for the stock. They will also lead to volatility because trading will swing wildly. So we need those two criteria. Um, and once you have those, you're pretty much good to go for a ratio spread. Uh, there's a couple other things you need to take care. Um, you need to worry about. Mainly, the only real thing other than that is that uh, the stock should be liquid enough to where your options are of high open interest. So I'm going to show you a couple of call options here that I've chosen. These are the August call options for Apple. And we're looking at the August 90 and the August 105 call options. Okay, so here's how the ratio spreads going to work. Here's how you could calculate how to play it. If you are bullish on Apple, what you're going to do is you're going to sell an in the money or, or close to the money call. So right now, Apple is trading at 97. And I've decided for this ratio spread, the best idea is to sell the 90 call. So we're selling an in the money call. And what we're going to do is we're going to buy out of the money calls. So we're selling the 90 call and we're going to buy 105 calls. Now here's the second thing you need to do once you've determined which options you want to play. Um, you need to determine how many of these calls you're going to buy for each one of these calls you're going to sell. And the way to do that is simply look at delta. What you want to do is you want to solve the inequality x times the out of the money delta is greater than the in the money delta. I'll say it again. x times the out of the money delta is greater than the in the money delta. So here we have a delta of 77 for the in the money and for the out of the money we've got a 27. So clearly if we buy three of these, 3 times 27 is going to bring us above 77. And that will give us the the ratio uh, spread. So it would be selling one of these and then buying three of these. All right. So I'm going to set up that trade and we're going to see the details of it. Now like I said, we want volatility to rise and um, you're going to see why we want volatility to rise simply by looking at Vega. Remember, Vega is how the price of the stock option changes for every one degree increase in implied volatility. Now here our implied volatility is about 20. Um, my options tool says it's about 22. I really don't know which one to trust. I heard that this uh, options express platform uh, was created by some mathematicians who did a lot of research on volatility so this is my go-to number. But Overall, you don't really need, you need, need to worry about the number itself, just you need to have an idea, and that, that's why we look at this line. We need, to have, we need to have an idea as to the trend of the volatility. So here, I'm thinking we're at a bottom. I mean, it's been at 20 for a while. Um, if Apple's going to head down or up, in either case, we're going to see, if we see any movement, um, volatility is going to move upward. So that's my theory here. And by the way, this is not a trade I'm recommending. I'm not telling you to go long on Apple. I have no positions on Apple. Uh, this is just an example. All right, so why do we want to be long in volatility? Why do we want volatility to rise? Well, if we are buying three of these 105 calls, now our Vega is this Vega times three. So our Vega is 45, and then minus the in the money calls Vega. So our Vega is basically 30. In other words, for this option strategy where we're selling one call and buying three calls, 
we are long Vega because our Vega is now what uh, $30 so for every one degree increase 1% 1 increase in Apple's volatility we get $30 to our option strategy okay and you're gonna see those numbers come out once I set this up so let's go and set this up now you'll see this program I believe calls it a, a ratio back spread um, I call it a ratio spread and I'll, I'll probably make a video on yeah they call, they call it a call back spread I'll probably make a video on what I consider to be a back spread later but for now let's just look at the ratio spread so I'm gonna set this up exactly as I stated we're gonna be buying selling one 90 call and we're gonna be buying three 105 calls and what that gets us is in the majority of cases a net credit in other words as soon as we open this trade we get money in our account so here immediately we can see the the benefit of playing this strategy the benefit is if Apple doesn't move in the direction that we expect it to in other words if Apple moves downward we don't lose any money in fact we gain money now remember we're bullish on Apple but we still gain money if we're wrong so if Apple moves downward we can actually keep that five hundred dollars now if Apple moves upward our profit is unlimited and the reason is you could just look at this profile here we're long Delta so when Apple moves upward our strategy pays off in Delta in other words we're mimicking holding a few shares of Apple stock um, and we're also long Vega like I said so when the volatility increases whether it be because of a downward movement or an upward movement this strategy also brings in more money so that's what we got now um, you're probably wondering where this max risk comes from that's if things kinda go away but not exactly so if Apple moves slightly and kinda stagnates between 90 and 105 all the way until August well we've uh, realized that max risk and that's exactly what we don't want to do the max risk happens exactly at 105 so if Apple goes up to 105 and stays there uh, until the options expire that's when we realize that one thousand dollar risk um, but for this strategy again the criteria are we're bullish on the stock and we're bullish on volatility now let me clarify the bullishness on the stock part we are bullish on the stock in a way that we are predicting the stock will move very quickly in that bullish direction so it could be a slow upward movement sure but it's not going to be slow to the extent where by the expiration we've only hit the out of the money call what we want to do is we want to surpass that out of the money call quickly so the ratio spread works really good for earnings reports where we think there's going to be a big price spike a price spike in the stock and that could bring us well over the out of the money call or well under the in the money call in either case we make money so it's kind of like a strangle or a straddle in that sense if we get a significant movement in either direction we will profit but we're looking to get the movement in the upwards direction because on in on that side we have an unlimited profit whereas on the downside we just have that credit we opened All right, so that's the ratio back spread and um, it's pretty easy to set up remember again all you have to do is find uh, a couple call options that you like make sure they have a high open interest and uh, whatever spread you can get would be great but separate them by a certain amount of strike price dollars keep the expiration date the same and then calculate how many you're gonna need to buy so that you're positive Delta and you can even go up higher you can go one to four um, one to five usually one to three is pretty standard one to two or one to three are pretty standard 
and uh, all, pretty much all brokerages platforms will allow you to enter this trade. Uh, some will give you an error if you try to put an odd ratio in there. For example, 2 to 5. Um, you can still put it in, you just got to call customer support. But overall, what you're looking to do is enter this trade at an entry credit so that you get paid to enter the trade and that you don't have to worry about being wrong because if you're wrong, you still get paid. And you want to be sure that you're long delta and long vega. That's pretty much it. Enter the trade, add a net credit, you're long on the stock, you're long on volatility. Um, again, you want an upward movement when you're playing calls to be quick. Um, other otherwise, you have the possibility of realizing that max risk. So it's great before you know phase three trial releases, it's great before news events, it's great before um, acquisitions, it's great before earnings reports. This is a strategy that really minimizes your risk, allows you to profit if you're wrong, and allows you to greatly profit if you're right. And for a lot of my trades, I'm always looking for a good ratio trade or a ratio backspread, which I'll teach in another video, because of those reasons. You get that really good risk to reward uh, profile that you don't really get with uh, the standard call option or with the standard debit spread. So the ratio spread, not a very popular uh, option strategy simply because it's a little confusing, but I hope I've explained it well enough in this video, and if I haven't, let me know so that I can make another video. Um, anyway, if you like this video, subscribe, and if you have any requests for other videos, I always take requests. This was a response to a request. Please leave that request in the comments section below and I'll get to it. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to see some examples of these ratio ratio spread plays, just go to DamonVero.com and uh, sign up for the Copy My Trades program. Or you can, you can actually go to uh, Seeking Alpha and look for my newsletter on Seeking Alpha as well. And uh, you will eventually, I, I probably send out one or two of these trades per week. So if you subscribe to my newsletter, you will uh, eventually see this type of trade and I'll explain it specifically why we're opening a ratio spread on this play and it's usually earnings related so for Apple like this play I just showed you I wouldn't really open this because I have no reason to think Apple is going to make a significant upward movement now I might open a put spread a put ratio spread because I'm thinking there's gonna be a sell-off pretty soon and Apple having a high beta will probably move faster than the market. Now, we could uh, we could guess that if Apple moves downward, it looks like there's a resistance at around 90. So, if you wanted to do it with puts, what you could do is you can sell the 100 puts because that's in in the money, and then you could buy the let's say 95 puts. So, you might sell one of these and buy two 95s. Again, you'd open it at a credit. Um, as Apple falls, both volatility will spike and uh, the the delta that you're long on uh, will allow that option strategy to profit. Now when you close this, that's probably a question you, you're going to be asking, so I'll answer it before I finish this video. When you close, well you close when you're profitable. You basically close when you've surpassed that out of the money, where are we? Here we are. When you've surpassed that out of the money strike price and uh, you think the stock has lost its momentum, now for an earnings report it's usually the next day or so after the earnings report you can just close right away so this is a strategy that's better for a short-term trade like a intra interday trade or an earnings trade or news trade it's not great for holding on to for the long term as I mentioned the max risk is only realized if you hold on to it all the way until this expiration date right now it's June um, you're not not going to see a max risk of a thousand dollars in June. You're not going to see a max risk of a thousand dollars in July, but you will see it in August. So that's why I try to set these strike prices one month or two months out, unless I know I'm going to sell within a day or so. If that's the case, I might just do the same month. But in general, I'll go a couple months out so that I don't ever have to really see this max risk, and I sell it really quickly anyway. 
Um, so I don't have to worry about theta too much. Remember, theta is time decay. That's how much money we lose per day. I think I've explained pretty much everything here. So again, subscribe if this was useful, if you found this useful. And uh, if you have any requests for videos, please leave them in the comment section below. And like the video. Do all that social media shit.